Hey folks, welcome to a brand new TW2020 video. And he joins us today for the third instalment of Battle of the Bells. We're on a long road to to All Out. We've got Fight for the Fallen coming up after this. Then we have Thank You Can, uh, Kana Chan. So a lot of good shows on the horizon. Can't believe we've only got another month left of Kana before she retires. But we're looking forward to this one. Quite a few of the main hitters are left off the card because we have tried to keep it strictly to title matches. But of course, we have a lot of belts in AEW, so yeah, there is still quite a few matches, it has to be said. It's going to be quite difficult to beat last year's 99 rated show, a main event of John Moxley defending the AEW World Championship against Walter, which led to MGF attacking him. And of course, we had the confrontation of Mercedes KV or Bernardo at the time, and of course, she's now Mercedes Money. Uh, and Jade Cargo as she defended her belt against Bailey Rose. So we had a lot of stuff last year that was quite quite decent in the year before the first of an instalment of it. Uh, we opted for a main event of the House of Black uh, against the Elite. Quite appropriate that, considering uh, the feuds that's been going on at the moment. But yeah, quite happy with this one. Let's just crack on. Let's see how we do a main event. Of course, it is Keith Lee's opportunity, the winner of the Owen Hart Tournament. And he will be facing the champion, Walter. Sit back, relax, let's go. This is Battle of the Bells, number three. So in terms of these shows, um, they're less amount of time. I think this goes 225 minutes, so still over three hours. But in comparison to some other shows, it is still short. And um, yeah, we're going to use it to build up a few things going forward. Uh, obviously, we need to get a card sorted and put together for all uh, out. One of the championships that's not in the line tonight is the All-Atlantic Championship, which I'll probably need to change to the International Championship, thanks AEW. Um, just Carmelo Casanova has got a injury at the moment, and I don't really want to risk him in too much stuff. Watch me, I forgot I booked him, but I'm pretty sure we left him off the card. But anyway, we are at the Arrowhead Stadium, in uh, front of 68,837, so I can already tell it was expecting 76,000, so the lack of big names has taken this away. We start off the show with the Super Elite in the ring. We have Hangman, we have Nick Jackson, we have Jay White and Adam Cole. Basically, they've lost Kevin Steen, who's walked out on them. They've lost Kenny Omega to a big injury. And, of course, a long, long time ago, they lost Matt Jackson as well through injury. So they're like, it's down to the final four. We need to be stronger than ever. Cody, we know you don't really want to see eye to eye with a lot of this at the moment. But come, on, come home, come to the Super Elite. Your family, all of us, let's just get things back on track. So they get Cody out, and Cody says, it's a shame it's happened to Kenny, to to Matt Jackson, obviously. Kevin Steen had the, the right idea in walking out on them, but basically it's a segment where they just try and try and convince Cody, and he just says, he's always been my brothers, but I just, I can't. I've got to do what's right for me. So he drops a mic, he walks out, and you can tell there's a bit of rage there between Hangman Nick Jackson, Jay White and Adam Cole. So nice wee opening segment, 100 rated, which is obviously ideal. That gives us a nice wee boost as we crack on to the matches uh, that have our attention. So we started off with an AEW Zero X Championship. Dragon Lee now has his new contract, so we gave him a chance against El Hijo Del by Kingo. And it was a bout that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Steal the show matchup, of course, because it is two Lucha Jaws. And, uh, yeah... By Kingo defeats Dragon Lee in 1344 with a 6.30 cent on, 5th defence of the belt, a 92 performance from him, and an 85 for your opener. Pretty solid stuff there, really happy with that. Dragon Lee has chilly momentum, which is a bit disappointing, but we'll start to build him up going forward. These two just cannot take their hands off each other. We just cut to the back and we see another just Malachi Black trying to get the jump on Brody King, and the two of them are just beating the absolute hell out of them. The road agents try and rip them apart, staff try and rip them apart, and it just makes Malachi Black just try and run for cover. Obviously, it's battle for the belts. This isn't a championship feud, but these two will do battle at Fight for the Fallen, and a very happy 86-rated segment. Moving along, we had the AW Women's World Tag Titles on the line. The team of Simone Jackson, uh, Johnson sorry, and Veronica were taking on the team of Sari and Loney which is, of course, Gulia. And with the decent matchup here with Simone and Veronica, picking up the win in 11.43 with Veronica pinning Gulia with a locked Wraith Slice. First defence of the AW Women's World Tag Titles. 
So he carried the match up here. I felt like I always want to have Veronica up against good active performers because it's obviously about her development as well. She's over now. She's like 80 over, but her best technical skill is like 23 or something. So it's all about the development. The star power's there. The psychology's there. It's just a case of helping her development as the save goes on. But nice to be 71 there. And it gives him a big spotlight having him on a pay-per-view as well. No Dwayne helping him this time. Next up, we had a matchup between Ruby Soho and Billy Rose for the AEW TBS Championship. Basically, we had a contenders match where Ruby Soho picked up the upset win over Billy Rose. But here, Bailey picks up the win in 11.50 with a Bailey to Bailey suplex, fourth defence of the belt, and a very solid 75 rated matchup. We had a promo from the AEW Mixed Tag Team Champions, of course, that is Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. And they just say they're the power couple of AEW and they will make sure they will hold these belts for a long, long time. Simple, effective promo, 64. Their title defence was against the team of Liviana Morgan and Jack Perry. And it was a decent match up here. Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford pick up the win. I wanted to give them a win over like decent names. Jack was kind of just thrown in here just because like, what could kind of work and I don't know really have a massive mixed tag team division. But the win anyway in 11.42, Penelope gets the win over Liv to basically give her some overness and she used the super bad cutter for the victory. It is a second tail defence for them and it is Jack Perry who was head and shoulders above the rest. A 79 performance so Kip's getting there but I feel like his ceiling is probably the third brand at the moment in time. So 71. Then we find, backstage, something something Cody Rhodes is basically bloody, unconscious, on the floor, and he has been the victim of a sneak attack. He's been beaten up by someone we don't know who, and paramedics have stretched Cody Rhodes out of the building. Who could it have been? He's got a lot of people that are against him. If you remember from a few videos ago, we are going to do Cody Rhodes CM Punk for the final time at All Out. Could it have been CM Punk, or could it have possibly been someone else? 87. We then had a decent matchup for the Queen of AEW Championship. Priscilla Kelly has been dominating on the Carnage brand, and she takes on, well, basically wrestlers from all sorts of brands. We gave an opportunity here to Venny, to Dakota, and to Team Elo, who I've not really done much with. And here we had a decent matchup. T Mello defeats Venny, Dakota, and Priscilla Kelly in 13 13 when T Mello submitted Dakota with the cross armbar to be your new Queen of AEW champion. A 74 here, you're probably thinking, but why? I haven't done anything with her. It's a chance to build someone up from nowhere right back up. She'll obviously move to the Carnage brand, and I think it's probably obvious that. Venny's above this belt, Priscilla Kelly's probably above this belt, and Dakota's doing good stuff on another brand. So 74, good spotlight for it, but the belt will, uh, will go with Ty Mello on Carnage. Speaking of women's championship matches, with the Shine Championship on the line is with the rematch between Chris Statlander and the champion Jimmy Hayter. Chris was determined to get the victory here, and it was about to had good heat and decent wrestling that saw Chris defeat Jimmy in 12.59 with the Area 451. She is your new Shine champion. It's so good to get her back in the save after a long term out injured. A 73 here. Crowd loves her win and the young female demographic are absolutely buzzing. She gets a celebration which gets a 69 which is fantastic. And then of course B Priestley, the friend of Jamie here, jumps in and beats the hell out of Chris Starlander. So B, of course, has been with us for a while now, but that's our back up to the main roster and aligned with Jamie Hayter. And the two English ladies decide, yeah, we're just going to rain on your parade, Chris Statlander. This feud is far from done. We then had the AEW tag team titles on the line, and uh, yeah, we gave Top Flight a chance, and it was about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd as the Briscoes defeated Top Flight in 11.34, when Mark Briscoe pinned Dante Martin with a fog Roggy Bull. And that was the third defence of the World Tag Titles. Jay Briscoe was head and shoulders above the rest. Darius is getting a little bit stale. And overall, it was a 78 rated matchup. Just good to give Top Flight this kind of opportunity. I've done the FTR against the Briscoes that many times. I felt it was time for somebody else to get a chance. 
and a uh, nice wee baby face, wee baby, baby face match will probably hamper it for a few points, uh, which will probably hamper our main event as well. Uh, oh, we didn't get a penalty for that. We just get Jay Briscoe's declining physical ability uh, and poor gimmicks for everyone else. We then cut backstage, it's with Chris Jericho and the former Queen of AEW, which is of course Priscilla Kelly, and Jericho just basically says to her, don't worry about losing the championship, you know we have massive plans for you here in AEW. We don't know where we're going to put you yet, but you'll be moving from the Carnage brand to either Rampage or Dynamite. At the moment in time, the plan is still basically using it as like Raw Smackdown and in ECW effectively as it was back in the day with Carnage. I do think at one point, and I know I don't think I've had Carnage for that long, we'll probably well go Dynamite, Rampage, and then that Carnage will turn into a full women's show because they have the star power to carry that. But I'm quite happy where it is just now, and I'll see how I feel with the, sh the shake-up won't be until all out anyway, but I'll probably move a few pieces beforehand before making a final decision, it's just to keep it fresh. Another thought figure that we have kicking about in AEW is Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he is with the challenger for the AEW Women's World Championship, Anna J, and her friend, the former co-holder of the Tag Team Championships, Britt Baker, and they've basically said, Britt, if you even try and go down to the ring, if you even try and help Anna J, then I'll be firing your ass out of this company. So Brett's obviously got to stay at the back. Anna J, Mayu Iwatani, one on one, no outside interference. That's a 72. And the matchup itself was exceptional as Mayu Iwatani has taken Anna J to a 92 rated match. Holy crap. Don't get me wrong, she's always at the performance center, so her starts are going up all the time. She's developed really well in this save. But I still feel it's too early to put the belt on Anna Jay. Mayu is going to carry this for a while. I think she's just so good. She's like her second best wrestler in the full company, male or female. And the diving double to foot stomp gets the win for a 13th defence of the AW Women's World title. That's just going to keep adding to that prestige. So fantastic stuff there. Um, yeah, I might even be one of my first women's matches over a 90. So delighted with that. Backstage. Before our, 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 I say co main event, it's our second two main event. Pipped up between Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia. Garcia says it's good to know Brian's back on a kind of full time basis. He says to him, You might be getting older now, but you can still hang with these guys. This is going to be a very good match for the TNT Championship. You know that Takesh is incredible, and you know the history that he has with Zack Saber Jr., and he knows how dangerous Ilya Dragunov is as well. But this matchup could be incredible and the dragon can still hang at the top. So that's a 67. Only an 81. Quite disappointed by that. Good matchup. Konosuke Takeshita defeats Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr. and Ilya Dragunov in 32-57. When Takeshita pinned Brian Danielson with a javelin kick. An 8th defence of the TNT title. Maybe I need to build up. Dragging off a bit more, maybe it was worked more on overness than performance in the case of Danielson, although he could be hampered by that physical decline. But these four in a matchup would be incredible. And we got an 81. Let's take a wee look here. So it was it was made a technical master class, so that's why Saber Jr. gets so well suited to the style. Uh yeah, Brian Danielson physical ability and two poor gimmicks in there as well. But overall, yeah, we'll take it. Now down to our main event, Keith Lee. Walter, World Championship on the line. Can it get into the 90s? No, it was poor. Okay. Maybe a poor rub of uh, the dice. Maybe a poor road agent. But something didn't align. But anyway, Keith Lee got his chance. Exceptional matchup. Walter defeats Keith Lee in 2014 with a real naked choke. Walter gets the ninth defence of the world title. Despite bringing a 95 and 86 performance, the segment itself only delivered an 83. And if we quickly have a look here, the only negative is a odd facial combination, as I say, two baby faces, but that's never been too much of a factor before. I mean, God, more than 100 rated match was two baby faces together. But the segment uh, had Ace as its, as its road agent, so there's Edge. But yeah, only delivered an 83. Not too sure how I feel about that. Overall, still an 82, still no pop changes, so that's pretty okay. Uh, yeah, I think we've done quite well there, a lot of good championship matches, we've got a few new champions, we've got some stuff built up for 
fight for the, the fall and we can already pencil in Malachi Black against Brody King, we can already pencil in something between B Priestley and Chris Statlander and uh, yeah, a new uh, direction for of course the Queen of AEW Championship and uh, yeah we await the next challenger to take on Walter. So I'm going to end it there, we'll be back next week with another pay-per-view and it will be the build to fight for the fall and we'll of course we'll add to that card and uh, I'll need to take the notepad out and start getting the next few shows booked in, especially those matches at all out. So cheers always for watching, hope you enjoyed it, if you leave a thumbs up it's deeply appreciated and of course check out the Grey Dog Software forums and the Fantasy Booker subreddit for a lot more verbal and audio content So and visual of course. So take it easy, see you soon, thanks as always, bye bye.